everybody. Uh, welcome to DevOps for Java Shops. Uh, I'm up against uh, Josh Long, Edson Yanaga, and a bunch of other guys. So thanks for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> I can tell you're really into DevOps if you're here at this session. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I'm, I'm excited to be back. This is my first conference in person post pandemic. I uh, I had to uh, try on my pants, see if they still fit properly and everything. I don't know about you guys, but. Uh, anyway, uh, too much information maybe, I don't know. All right, so um, today I've got, I've got um, some demos I'm gonna show you using GitHub Actions and feature flags using this thing called Azure App Config and App Service and a few other things. Um, and uh, if it's a small enough crowd, if you guys wanna take, just ask questions along the way, we can keep it casual. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. If you want any more information, I actually have a full working uh, version of all the demos I have here, including a workshop, which is like a three, four hour workshop at DevOps for Java Shops, uh, ACA MS slash DevOps for Java Shops. And I'm looking for folks to translate it in other languages and deliver it and stuff like that. I'd be happy to deliver it myself or help you support you delivering it in your organization wherever you want to. Uh, so let me know about that. I'll, I'll show this link at the end as well. Uh, so we're gonna cover four things today. I'm gonna go real quick through what is DevOps because most people know by now, uh, but I just wanna make sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, and there's a little bit of valuable, valuable information there. And then I'm gonna talk about how you work with DevOps with GitHub. Uh, and uh, then I'm gonna show a demo, which is most of the presentation, about 40 minutes and then uh, uh, talk about how you can keep your investments. So if you already have investments in DevOps, which most people do, uh, I'll tell you how you can do that. So what is DevOps? <clears throat> this is a, a great quote from a colleague of mine, Donovan Brown. DevOps is a union of people, process, and products to, to enable continuous delivery of value. So several things there, people, process, and products are key but value is key as well. You know, it takes a lot of investment to set up a DevOps infrastructure, organization, teams, getting everybody on the same page and working together. Um, so if, if you make that investment, it's important that you're delivering value. So hopefully this presentation will help you understand how to deliver some value with this. I'm gonna show uh, Azure, because I work with Microsoft, but a lot of this stuff is applicable to other clouds. GitHub also works with um, AWS, Google, uh, most of the cloud platforms. So uh, people, process, and products is the first thing. So people, uh, you know, these are some of the things you hear. It works on my machine, uh, that old cliche. Uh, who's supporting what? Uh, in terms of the project, might be have a new feature or a new uh, process you're trying to implement. Uh, who's supporting what part of that? Where's my code? Not only where's my code physically, like where is it actually located on the infrastructure that we have running, but also where's my new feature? Where's my new update that we have? Can I get an update? Update is again, another uh, a word with several meetings. Could be an update on the project, the new feature, or an update on the software, literally. Uh, and how's the timeline? It's the one question everybody wants to know as soon as you're working on a project. Where are we? How long is it gonna take? Are we gonna deliver on time? And how do you actually answer all these questions and basically cater to the people in the organization that's going to be managing this stuff? And to do that, you need a good process. So once again, people, process, product. Uh, so the process here, this is a typical software development lifecycle. Planning, developing and testing, releasing and monitoring and learning. Uh, each one of these phases needs to be supported in your process. Uh, and this is how you support the people. Uh, you'll have people who are working on planning. They need to be able to communicate effectively with the developers and the testers to make sure that whatever they're developing is what the original feature uh, requested. Uh, and then uh, the release. The release has to be done securely and without interrupting the operation or the organization. Uh, and then once it is, it's in production, you actually need to monitor and learn as well. And that's the part that is quite often overlooked. So monitoring and learning is quite often the the part that just gets overlooked, if it takes a while to implement a new feature or a new offering, uh, sometimes the 
feature that was requested doesn't really resemble the feature that was delivered. So uh, it's important to manage all that so that everyone's in communication, everyone's working together. And you can do that with good products. So um, at Microsoft, we've got some products for developers. We've got uh, GitHub, Visual Studio, and Visual Studio Code. How many people here are familiar with Visual Studio Code, by the way? Show of hands. Oh yeah, quite a few, great. That's great. Uh, <laughs> Pre-pandemic, it was just, just a few hands. Uh, so for those of you who aren't, it's a uh, free open source text editor uh, and it has a ton of extensions, which makes it a pretty good IDE, including for Java. Um, Red Hat developed an IDE for Java for Visual Studio Code for us and we took it over and we now maintain it as well. So uh, check that out if you haven't checked that out yet. Uh, for delivery, we've got Azure Pipelines which is, uh, those of you familiar with Azure DevOps, uh, it's, it, those terms are used interchangeably. It was Azure DevOps, now it's Azure Pipelines. GitHub Actions is actually based on Azure Pipelines. In fact, it uses the same runtimes under the hood that uh, Azure Pipelines used to. Uh, and of course, there's GitHub Extensions as well, and those don't get as much press as Actions. So Actions are these um, scripts that you write and though they can basically do a lot of things, including uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, CICD, uh, but they also do a lot of other things. GitHub extensions are third-party applications that are written by someone else. They're not necessarily scripts, but it's uh, uh, something to use to connect. So for example, if you want to connect to um, Artifactory or uh, AWS, app service or Azure app service even, or uh, working with Azure pipelines and GitHub Actions, uh, you can use uh, GitHub extensions for that. So there is a difference between extensions and actions that's important to know. Uh, and then managing and securing, which is probably 75% of the job these days, uh, making sure that when you implement something, it's secure and that it's reliable and that it scales well and performs. Uh, and for that, we have Azure Monitor, Azure Policy, Azure Automation, and Security Center. We literally spend billions of dollars uh, keeping up as best we can with uh, today's threats. So uh, those are the products that we have. Um, drilling down into what I'm gonna show today, uh, I'm really gonna highlight GitHub Actions, but we have all these others as well. So um, Azure Boards, or Kanban Boards, um, Azure Pipelines are CI CD tools you can use to build and deploy. Uh, Azure Artifacts are a great way to store artifacts and Azure Test Plans are out there too. But today I'm actually gonna focus on GitHub and GitHub Actions because uh, a lot of folks are really um, using these and implementing. How many people have worked with GitHub Actions already? All right, just a few of you. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And uh, how many people work with Code Spaces or heard of Code Spaces? No, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, this is one person, okay, cool. So you're gonna like this. I won't tell, tell you what it is yet, but uh, I'll show you code spaces in a little while. I think you're gonna like it. So um, we're gonna talk about GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub Extensions I already mentioned. Uh, we have integration, of course, with other clouds with GitHub uh, and popular IDEs. And we have, uh, one of the things that happened <laughs> back in the day, it was a, it's a few years ago now, when GitHub was acquired by Microsoft, people are going, oh my God, they're gonna start charging for everything. But we actually charge less now for things than we did uh, when GitHub was an independent company. For example, uh, private repos are now free for individuals and teams. So it used to be that public repos were free, but you had to pay for private and had a little bit more for teams, but all that's free now. So definitely check that out. And I'm gonna show you code spaces. I'll talk about code spaces a little bit. Uh, here's a standard slide about <clears throat> how great GitHub is. Uh, I was going to show you something else, though. Let me see here. This is my... Yeah, let me refresh this. There we are. Uh, State of the Octaverse. So if anyone ever wants to find out what's going on in GitHub world, uh, this is a cool report, uh, State of the Octaverse. Um, 2021, 2022, I believe is gonna come out soon, but uh, there's all kinds of information. GitHub goes out to all the repos, they check out what everyone's doing uh, with privacy, 
considerations as well. But uh, check out what code people are using, how many users are being worked with, and things like that. Uh, 170 million pull requests merged. This is in small text, I'll read it to you. Uh, 73 million total developers. Uh, lots of cool stuff. But this is free, it's out there, it's great for uh, you know, these kind of topics always come up when you're working on planning new software and things like that. So uh, it tells you the top languages over the year. And up here at the front, 2014 to 2021 uh, are, is the range here. JavaScript right at the top because of Node.js and React and a few other variants. Um, Java, there's Java. Uh, so Java and Python, the neck and neck, it looks like around 2018, 2019, they switched but you know, they're still way up there. Um, next is TypeScript, uh, C-sharp, PHP, uh, C++, uh, that's shell, okay. Uh, so bash shell, uh, C, I don't know if that's a programming language, I guess some people use it for that. They certainly run a lot of organizations on bash, but you get the idea. So there's a lot of data in here uh, to check out. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave it there, but uh, check out the state of the octaverse if you get a chance. That's a great way to uh, figure out what's going on out there. This slide's a bit old, but yes, we have lots of companies that work with GitHub. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go real quick through the slides and we'll get to the demos. Uh, <clears throat> so end-to-end -end code to cloud DevOps is what GitHub has. Um, it's, it's elastic, it runs on virtual machines. Uh, when you're running um, your GitHub actions, they're actually running on these things called runners, which are virtual machines with containers on top of them. Uh, and uh, you can deploy anywhere, and I'll give you some examples of that. Uh, powerful, flexible CI, CD is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, and uh, we have a lot of extensions and actions already out there. So just search for GitHub Marketplace, and you'll see all the actions that we have. Um, there's literally thousands. It says 2,500 actions. I think there's a lot more now. Um, and anything you can possibly imagine, somebody's probably already written an action and published it, either a vendor or a third party. So definitely check that out. They're in the marketplace. <clears throat> GitHub Mobile. A lot of people don't know about this. So there's a mobile app for GitHub. Uh, you can't do everything, but you can do things like uh, uh, merge pull requests and uh, enter issues and stuff like that. It's handy, I use it on vacation when I don't bring my laptop, which isn't, isn't often. Code spaces, so I did wanna talk about code spaces. So uh, this is Visual Studio Code. Let me show you this. This is Visual Studio Code. It's a integrated developer environment. I can show um, Markdown, I can show YAML. I've got tons of extensions that I've got written here. Where are my extensions? I didn't write them, but uh, blah, blah, blah. We also have, a, you know, a source control for working with GitHub directly. Where's my extensions? There they are. So I've actually got a ton of extensions installed and there's even more that you need. Uh, so pretty much anything you think of that you're working with in an IDE, there's probably an extension for that. So that's a cool thing. So why am I bringing up Visual Studio Code? Because Code Spaces is actually, oops, there we go. Code Spaces is actually an implementation of Visual Studio Code, including most extensions, in a browser. So it's kind of cool. You can fire it up directly from GitHub and work with a GitHub repo and actually run stuff directly from your GitHub repo uh, using these things called hosted runners, which I'll talk about later. Uh, it really does simplify things. You can also specify pre-built environments to work with your code spaces. So you can specify a GitHub repo. When somebody opens this GitHub repo, they have to use this pre-built environment, including some extensions, some security, compliance tools, things like that. So it's a huge advantage for organizations that want to have uh, shared environments uh, and they have to have some compliance control as well. I'll give you a demo of that in a little bit. All right, speaking of demos, uh, so today I'm gonna to show a demo of DevOps in action. We're gonna take an application. It's a Spring Boot application. Uh, and we're gonna do uh, A-B testing and we're gonna do blue-green deployments with this. Uh, A-B testing is where you deploy one feature to some of your users 
but some of the users still see the old version of the application. So maybe 50% see the new feature, some see the old one, and then you monitor the behavior or you make sure the bugs don't turn up and things like that. Uh, and then blue-green deployments are where you deploy something to some of the users or some of the uh, servers or some of the application environments that you have and slowly deploy it out to the others as well, so you don't interrupt any of the operations. So that's kind of the difference between A to B testing and blue-green deployments. And I'll show you how you can do that with, uh, with, in this case, Azure App Service and something called feature flags. So, all right, here's the application. It's uh, just a little website, Spring Boot application. As I mentioned before, there's a GitHub repo you can get this from. And, um, there's a feature manager linked into this. So this is, uh, this is our developer advocate mascot named Git, uh, Bit at uh, Microsoft. And if I go into my portal here, so this is my Azure portal, portal.azure.com for those of you who don't. Uh, if you have an account, you're probably familiar with it. If you don't, you can get a free trial there. Um, and what I've done is I organized my portal dashboard into uh, events, in this case, Dev Nexus, uh, but most people would organize it by geography or team or something like that. And then inside of this, I've got this thing called a feature manager, which is um, it's called Azure App Configuration. And what I can do with this is I can enable and disable features in my application. The application is running, I don't need to deploy it again, it just has a little flag inside the application that turns features on and off. So if I disable this beta feature that I created here, I go into the application again and I refresh it. Every time it refreshes, it checks to see if that is enabled. There we go, so bit's gone. Uh, and then if I enable it, bit will come back. You know, you get the idea. So the feature flag itself uh, controls that. Now the cool thing, it's a really simple example, right? But what I wanna show you today is we're gonna deploy this and the app is actually dependent on the feature flag. So you have to make a connection between the app and the feature flag and it has to be a secure connection. This is a typical deployment. I could show you the typical hello world deployment that's not connected to anything, but that's a boring demo, I think, because it doesn't have any dependencies. There's no, it's not a real world example. There's very few applications out there that are standalone and don't need a data backend or something. In this case, I'm using feature flags to show you how to connect those together. All right. So to do that, what we're going to do, oh, actually, I should show you the, the actual, let me go over here for a second. This is the repo. So this is the repo itself. And um, it's pretty basic. And we've got a GitHub action. We've got one in there, but it's just disabled right now. Um, and I'm going to show you how you actually do this for a deployment. So let's go back to our portal. And I'm going to go to the menu on the left, and I'm going to create a new Azure App Service. Just web app create. How are we doing? 720, that's good. All right. Um, and the web app name is going to be DevNexus2022. Okay, and I got a little green check mark. Can everyone see that at the back? I don't know. Um, let me make that a little bigger. So DevNexus, wait, we want to make this resource group DevOps for Java shops. There we go. I should explain what I'm doing here. Um, so if I go to the dashboard over here, so the first thing you need to do when you're working with Azure or most uh, clouds is you have to group things into some sort of resource collection and ours is called a resource group. So this little square box you see here is our resource group. And inside of here, I've got several applications that I've already used. This is the one I just showed you. Um, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm gonna create a new resource inside this resource group. It's just a handy way to collect things and put them together. So DevOps for Java Shops is my resource group. DevNexus 2022 is the name of the Website I'm going to use and .azure .website, dot .azure websites .net is the extension. I got a little green check mark, which means that's an okay one. 
Um, I can publish code, a Docker container, or a static web app. In this case, I'm going to go with code. I'm going to select a Java runtime stack. S Java 17, we just got this set up this week for app service. Um, but I'm going to choose Java 11 uh, because I just tested my application on Java 11 on Monday, and this came out on Wednesday. So we're going to go with the dependable part for the demo. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, you've got several uh, app, app, app services you can use here. Java SE, Red Hat, and several flavors of Apache. We're just going to go with the embedded web server for now. And then I've got several locations I can use. And in this case, I'm going to use West US 2 because I already have a plan set up in there. So each app service is part of a plan. Uh, and that plan controls everything, including the SKU and the size you're going to use. This one's a pretty big server because for demos, I want it to work fast. So um, I make a pretty big one. It's probably way bigger than I need, uh, but hey, that's the way it goes. All right, so that's just creating the actual service. Now let's talk about continuous deployment. Uh, it, when I enable, I click enable here, and what it's gonna do is I have to give it information on GitHub about that repo I showed you. So it's pretty easy, check bbens. Hopefully it doesn't ask me to authenticate. No, good. Uh, and then, if I go to DevOps with GitHub, test feature flags, I use the main branch. Uh, so I've got my organization inside my GitHub account. I've got my repository, which I showed you earlier, and then my main branch. And it creates this uh, YAML file that is going to be posted to my GitHub repo and trigger an action. And then that action is supposed to deliver the code to my Azure App Service, but it's gonna fail the first time. So uh, I'll explain why in a minute. So networking then, you can enable network injection, which is uh, having a, uh, a virtual network and a uh, IP address with a reverse proxy, but we're not gonna do that and we're not gonna turn on monitoring today and we don't need tags because this is a demo. So if I go ahead and create this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna fire up that action that I told you about. It's gonna say deployment is in progress and it's gonna say deployment succeeded, which is a total lie. Well, not a lie, but uh, it's deceiving. Because if I go into my test feature flags here and I look at my runs, oh, it's not there yet, okay. Let's go back here for a second. Where is it? There it is. Deployment is still in progress, so it might take a minute. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the website itself is created. That means that it's gone ahead and pushed out. Yeah. <laughs> it says it's created, it says it succeeded, but it didn't succeed. It's gonna fail totally. When I click on this link, yeah, it says, hey, Java developers, because there's nothing there yet. The reason why there's nothing there yet, if we go into the actions, you should see this new action here, which you don't. Why don't you see the new action? Okay, hold on. Workflows, huh. We are in the right place, DevOps for feature flags. That's the one I picked. What's going on? Huh. Huh. All right. Well, this is a good demo. See, you got a live, live uh, debug here. Did I know I set that up right? Dev Nexus. Test feature flags. Actions. Come on. I'm going to do it again. All right, fine. Hmm. There it is, DevNexus. All right, where's my CI CD? Yeah, I know about that. Running. Yeah, okay, live demos. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to go here.
Hmm. That's weird. Now it's not giving me the menu either. <laughs> oh boy. Create a resource. We're going to start over. Web app, create. All right. We pick the DevOps for Java shop. So we're going to call it Dev Nexus 2. It's possible that I, I picked the wrong repo, but I don't think so. Let's do this too. Java shops, next deployment, enable, organization, events. Now this is where I could have gone wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got it. DevOps for Java shops, test feature flags, main, and I'm gonna skip the rest, <laughs> review and create. Create, okay. I don't know. All right, deployment is in progress. I definitely, you saw it, I did this, this repo, test feature flags, that was weird. Let's go now. It had workflows. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So we got I don't know what happened. Did I pick the wrong repo? I don't know. It's weird. Okay. So anyway, let's get back to the demo. Live, live, live stuff. Um, so it's running, but it's going to fail. The app service is going to fail too. There we go. So deployment's complete. Wonderful. Let's go back to the dashboard. DevNexus 2 should be sitting here. DevNexus 2. Yeah. All right. And yeah, this is still going to fail. Uh, and uh, one of the cool things you can do here is you can go devnexus2.scm.azurewebsites.net. And you can see, indeed, if I zoom in on this, you can look at your root site, and you can see that there's just a HTML page there. Everybody might know that. Uh, and there's no jar file. So there should be a jar file here. So this is what you would do to figure that out. You go to test feature flags, and then you go to your actions, and you're going to see that it failed. You look at the build, and it was a build with Maven, and it's a long there error message, but basically the gist of it is that the feature flag is not connected, right? So the feature flag has a connection string that you need to use to uh, add to the repo, and I've got that in settings secrets. So of course, this is a connection string that you don't wanna share in your public code. Uh, so we've got secrets in GitHub, and if you go into secrets, there's for actions, code spaces, and depend upon. So in this case, actions, I've actually got a secret already called app configuration connection string. And these are the published profiles. So just so you know, these are the, this one was just updated two minutes ago. These are the published profiles that connect your GitHub repo to that app service I created. So that's how you connect that link. There's a token in here as a secret that connects the two together. So no one can publish to your web app uh, from your repo. They can trigger things, but they can't actually publish. Uh, so the connection string is what connects the uh, feature flag to the application itself. So if we go back into the code here, I've got a provided GitHub workflow here, which would actually do that for me. Um, the provided GitHub workflow has the secret part in it. So if I go in here and I look down here, I just have to set up this environment variable. And this will connect and make that build work properly. All right. So in order to do that, I can go in here and I can edit, right? I can go in here and I can go to the actual piece of code and I can edit, but that's not really good practice, especially if multiple people are using your repo 
So this is where code spaces come in, yay. So I could do something, everyone's familiar with this for copying GitHub, if you're using GitHub. Uh, you copy your GitHub repo, you get Git clone to get it local copy, and then you can mess around with it, and then push back to your repo, whatever changes you make. We can also do that with code spaces now. So uh, I can create a code space, and the code space itself will create an IDE. Uh, but let's do, um, I'll do a little advanced options here, and I can go into my branch, I can have a dev container. I remember I mentioned the dev container, so you can have a pre-built dev container that you can use with all kinds of pre-built stuff that your organization needs. I can set up the region that I wanna use this to run in, uh, in case there's any compliance, and then I have machine types. In this case, it's a four core, eight gig RAM, 3D, 32 gig storage, and I'll explain what that is in a little bit. But let's create the code space. How are we, how are we still got plenty of time. So this doesn't edit my, when I edit something in this code space, it's not editing my repo. It's actually creating a clone in a container. And then uh, you've got something that looks a lot like Visual Studio Code over here. So if I zoom in on this, get rid of that. So you see here, this is all the, um, the stuff that we have to change. In the case of DevNexus, Let's pull this down. So as you can see, this looks a lot like Visual Studio Code, but the power of it is it's not. It's in my browser, so I can do stuff here. Uh, this is the main Dev Nexus 2, and my GitHub workflow down here, I wanna have this environment variable added to my workflow, and then I wanna trigger it again. So if I go to Dev Nexus 2, add my NVAR right there, and then, oh, so this is a good example. So down here, it's detected this is a Java application. And for those of you at the back, it says, extension pack for Java extension is recommended for this repository. Do you want to install it? So I can install the extension pack, but this is a great time to use those pre-configured containers, right? So if your organization already had something, you can set up a container everyone can use with those installed. And that sets up all the Java support that we have on Visual Studio Code, including remote access and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. That's a whole different presentation. But anyway, so I've saved this. Have I? Saved it. Okay, and now you see over here in the source control, it's telling me that we're out of sync with the main repo. Remember, this is not the main repo. We're in the browser, but this is a clone of the repo. So you have to push it just like you do anything else. So let me zoom in a little bit on that. So I'm gonna say dev next uh, session update one. Uh, and this is going to push this uh, to the repo. If I click click here to commit, it tells me there's no stage changes. Yep, I didn't stage anything. Uh, you want to stage and commit? Yeah, let's do that. And if I hit the sync button, it's actually going to pull and push. Uh, no, I won't do git fetch. I will close that. So now we're in sync with the repo. So guess what happened? We've triggered, let's see, that's the code. Got too many tabs open now. There we are, okay, so we trigger the action now. Okay, so the action is running again. This time it's gonna work. <laughs> um, and I know that's gonna work because I've done it a few times before, although the last thing didn't work. All right, so uh, while that's going, I wanna show you what this runs on. I think that's a good thing to know. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, let's go back to the portal, dashboard over here, I have a bunch of links. And if I look at GitHub hosted runners, so GitHub hosted runners are basically containers, they're running on top of a virtual machine. If you need to know what virtual machine it is, it's a Linux and Windows virtual machine on a standard DS2 V2 virtual machine on Microsoft Azure, uh, and uh, it uses uh, a fork of the Azure Pipelines agent. And what's in there? Uh, let, let's go and look at that. So, inside there, you've got several things that are kind of interesting here. The hosted environments themselves, you've got Ubuntu 20, 18, Mac OS, and Windows Server, so three versions of Windows Server as well. 
So in this case, it's running on Ubuntu. And if we go in there, uh, they've got a whole bunch of things already preloaded for you, which is kind of nice. Um, they've got all kinds of package management. Uh, they've got pretty much anything you can imagine. You can also add things at runtime or in that dev container that I told you about for the pre-configured environments in your code spaces. Uh, you can add things in runtime with your YAML as well. So if there's an old version of Node you need to run, which is, seems to be always the case for my apps, uh, you can add that in here. But we do have the most recent versions of Node and NPM and things like that. So we keep all of this stuff running and maintained. We check for security and all that. So when this is actually running, it's running on, where are we? Once again, too many open. Uh, so this did succeed this time. So it's actually running on one of those hosted agents. So when you fire up an action, it goes out and grabs that VM. It fires a container up on that VM with the configuration that you specify in your YAML. In my case, in Ubuntu 2004 with the latest version and all that. So the build succeeded this time because we had the connection with the secret. And uh, the deployment succeeded as well. But still not going to work. <laughs> when I go into the app service itself, I'll show you what happens next. Oh, so here, if we start here and we look at the app service now, that instead of an HTML file, now we have an app jar file. So the app jar file is sitting there and it fired up, but there was an error. And uh, I'll show you what that means. Okay, so it's dev nexus 2. I remember to grab that one and not 2022. Dev Nexus 2. So I go to the actual website now. And it's still failing. It says, at this time we get a different message. Instead of saying, welcome Java developers, now we got an application error. And um, can anybody guess why that is? Can anybody guess why the application error happens in the runtime uh, versus the hosted agent? Well, there's a, uh, there's a good reason for it. Uh, it is because the hosted agent now has the connection to the feature flag, right? But the application itself doesn't have that connection yet. So what we have to do here is we have to actually go into our configuration. I have to zoom out a little bit so I can get to it. Configuration. And I need to set up an environment variable. Come on, Azure. Anyway, let me grab that environment variable while we're here. All right. You want me to get that? That's the ring doorbell. I heard that. All right, where are we? Okay. All right, so here's the application settings. What I need to do here is I need to set up a new application setting. In this case, it's called app configuration connection string. And there's the string. And there's a deployment slot setting. Just bookmark that for a second. I'm gonna explain what deployment slots are in a minute. Okay, so that's that. So now we've got this saved. I have to remember to hit save, which I don't always do. Uh, and then it's going to update the web app setting. It's actually going to restart that server. And this is why I have a way overpowered server for this, because it starts in seconds, which is great for demos. And uh, now if I go back to the application itself. All right. Let's go to the overview again. I thought I had it open, but I probably do in one of those. One of those. There we go. Now you get a different error message, which is a good thing, because it's a Spring Boot app. Hey, there he is, so there's Bit. So now this is the new devnexus2.azurewebsites.net. This is the old one here. This is the DevOps for Java shops at azurewebsites.net. And it's got Bit there as well. I can turn both of them on and off using this feature flag. So that's the idea with the feature flags is you can control these things, turn them on and off, turn them on and off. 
Sometimes it takes a second to refresh. Let's go to the new one. Yeah, there it is, gone. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously this is a, a simple example, but the idea would be you could create a new feature, put it in a code segment, and wrap, it, wrap that feature flag around it, and then turn it on and off for different users for, for A-B testing. Um, and uh, let me go back into the feature flags. Now that's not, you, you don't have to do it manually as well. You can set up a feature flag to have, uh, to have different things, use feature filter. There's targeting, which means you can have a specific region or location based on IP addresses and other things for seeing this new version of whatever you're trying to turn on or off. You can have a time window. So if you want to do something that's only displayed during Dev Nexus and then turn it off after that, you can do that as well. So start date, expiry date. And there's a custom as well. And in the custom, you can add a percentage. And the percentage is cool because you can have, once again, uh, for A-B testing, uh, you could have half the people go to one site, half people go to the other. You don't have to manually turn it on and off. You can also use that for blue-green deployments because you can slowly increase the percentage of people who see it until it's up to 100%. But there's one more way to do that as well that I want to show you. So if you go into the app service that I had, all right, this is the app service itself. It's up and running now. If I go down here, remember I mentioned uh, deployment slots. Just bookmark that. So there's a way to deploy and manage environment variables and deployments using your GitHub Actions to these things called deployment slots. And you can have several deployment slots in one app service. In this case, I've just got one, but let's add a slot. And this call this one Canary Add. And this takes a second. And then what you can do is set up 50-50. So half of the people go to the new site and half of the people go to the old site. <laughs> it's creating, it's creating. Azure's a little slow today. Yeah. Close. So now I can go 50, right? So I can do that blue-green deployment that I talked about from here. Uh, I can have 50% of the people go to the new site and 50% of the people go to the old site, uh, depending on which version of the site we want them to see. So you can set up two, diff two different GitHub actions, one that goes to the deployment slot and one goes to the other. The other thing you can do is you can do this swap. So swap will actually change, I better not do that right now, but it'll actually change the site to the deployment slot site, if that makes sense. So you'd have the new features in the Canary site, let me zoom in on that. And then the old features in Dev Nexus 2. And then when you want to just swap them around, you can just, when you're ready to put everything into production, you just hit the swap button and it'll move everything into production. And the old site will still be sitting there where the new site used to be. Uh, and then if you need to put it back, you just hit swap again and it goes back. So it's a quick way to put things in and roll them back if you need to. Just one version though but that's kind of a cool way to do it too. Now I did want to, we got a little extra time, so I did want to tell you about uh, Azure Pipelines as well. So let's go in there. So that's, that's basically how you set up GitHub Actions and use uh, GitHub Actions and feature flags to do A-B testing and blue-green deployments, and then you can use the deployment slots as well. Actually, one more thing I should show you here. So the other thing, is, that's why I couldn't see the menu because I zoomed in too much. Uh, so you can scale up and scale out for your app service as well. So this is for performance and scalability. Mine right now, I mentioned, is way over, over produced for this uh, uh, in a normal real world setting. This has got uh, 32 gig gigs of memory and uh, eight virtual CPUs. Uh, I usually turn it down to here in between demos, but that's the one I use. So I can scale up even more than that. I can create a huge scale on the app service. And you can also scale out on the app service, which is uh, custom auto scale. So you can have it if the, if the single virtual CPU that you've got over, is over a certain percentage, it'll 
add another CPU and start running that one as well, seamlessly for the end user. So there's all kinds of features there. I did want to show you another one, which is uh, Azure Pipelines. Azure Pipelines is a little more advanced. Uh, GitHub Actions is actually under the hood Azure Pipelines. So let's show you that as well. I think that's a, a good thing to do. We've got a few minutes left. And let me zoom out. So this is going into Azure Pipelines, an Azure Pipelines project. And what you can do here is you can do a build a lot like the one you saw in the GitHub Action. Uh, so if you go into Pipelines, you've got Pipelines, Environments, Releases. So Releases is where you actually do the CI CD part. Uh, you can also do builds and you can connect to Azure Pipelines from GitHub repos using those extensions that I mentioned before. There's one called an Azure Pipeline extension. It's written by Microsoft to connect to Azure Pipelines to GitHub Actions. Um, but I wanted to show you this because this is kind of cool. This is a more sophisticated sort of release. So in this case, I've got, let me zoom in. So I've got a build. If the build succeeds, then it can move on to a staging server. And that staging server then, it has a post-deployment condition which asks for my permission. So it asks for my permission to actually approve this. Um, and if it's approved, it moves on to Canary. So Canary is that deployment slot that I told you about earlier. Uh, inside of here, if you look at the deployment slot itself, um, it's a web app on Linux. And app service name is uh, Java Shop Production, where is that slot? Oh, it's down here. So if I go in here and I say the resource group, DevOps for Java Shops, just like before, uh, and then the deployment slot, you set it to Canary, and it'll deploy automatically to Canary, and then you can do an A-B test that way. Now if I go back, so that's Canary, and then I can actually have a post-deployment condition which once again, I approve it. So you wanna have your testing team go through staging and say, hey, this is past staging. All right, we're gonna put it out in the canary. It's in production now, but it's on a deployment slot. So it's like 50-50 uh, for the deployment. But once the deployment team approves it to be moved to production, it doesn't automatically move it to production. There's also a pre-deployment condition you can set up. Inside this pre-deployment condition, I've got it set up to uh, that even though the post-deployment has gone through to the next stage, it's not gonna go to the pre-deployment unless I approve it again. And one of the nice things here is I can deploy it um, in the future. So I can actually set this up to go at Friday night, which no developer would do, but uh, Friday night at 9 p.m., uh, I can set this up to deploy that way. There's also these things called gates. And the gates themselves are a way to uh, manage an automated deployment and check for policy compliance and things like that. So they have uh, Azure policy compliance. So I mentioned Azure policy and Azure, Azure monitor before. Uh, you can invoke an Azure function, which goes out and calls a third party tool to check your source code for open source vulnerabilities and stuff like that. You can invoke a REST API if you have a vendor that does that. So the same idea, you can go out to a third party that checks for compliance or security or anything you need. Uh, then you can check for Azure Monitor alerts. So you can have your automated testing that actually um, tells you whether it's a yay or nay in terms of performance to move to the next stage. Uh, and then you can query work items. So the work items themselves are in an Azure board. Uh, so you can do all that with Azure Pipelines. It's a little more sophisticated, a little more integrated than um, than GitHub Actions itself. GitHub Actions is catching up, but this is still a little more mature product. So if you need that kind of secure control and integration, uh, Azure Pipelines is still a way to check that out. Um, let's see. Wow, look at that. I better fix that. It says my Azure DevOps organization has, has been identified for Azure DevOps Footprint Reduction Initiative. It's going to be deactivated. It reminds me of the uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Vogons are, are coming for me, for those of you who might have read it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> anyway, 
That's, uh, that's new, I gotta check that out. Um, the other thing I wanna show you, so one of the cool things here is I can integrate, and you can do this with GitHub Actions as well, is I can integrate with um, Jenkins as well. So how many people here are using Jenkins? Okay, yeah, there's quite a few of you using, I mean, in the Java world, a lot of people are using Jenkins, and they already have a massive investment in building and testing, but not so much for deployment, that's what I found anyway, uh, when you're working with Jenkins. So at this point, you can actually integrate this with Jenkins. Uh, if I go in here, I can have an artifact type, which is Jenkins, and I can integrate with my service on Jenkins, so if it's a successful build, then I can pass that over to this deployment I just showed you, and then you have all this integration and security and stuff for doing the deployments, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that's another way to do it. Uh, now I did mention, I'm, speaking of that, I was gonna talk about keeping your investments. So that's basically the demos. Uh, so if you're already invested in DevOps and things like Jenkins, uh, don't worry, uh, that's just one example of how we're working together. So GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines have integrations that you can use. So you can keep all the investments you already have, but you can create that sort of people, process, and products using deployments or whatever else you need. All the products you see here have integrations with Azure. In fact, if I show you, I don't know if anyone's ever seen this, CI, Jenkins, IO. CI.jenkins.io, this is actually Jenkins running Jenkins to build Jenkins. So <laughs> um, a while back, we, we, we were working with the, um, the Jenkins organization to uh, have our, to support Azure deployments so they can test things on Azure. Uh, most of it's AWS these days, but we still have stuff here like ACI, Maven, that's a, um, an actual Maven what we call an Azure Container Instance, so they're actually testing Windows on Jenkins. So every time a new pull request comes in to Jenkins, this is live, this is a live site. I, it's always different if you go and check it out, ci.jenkins.io. Uh, you'll see uh, they're testing all the new pull requests that come in to see if they're gonna work and they pass tests in Jenkins. And uh, some of the ways they do that is they integrate with uh, Azure. In this case, there's an Azure, um, ACI, in this case, Maven, uh, Windows 11, it looks like. Uh, it's a container that runs Windows, and they're testing out something or other on there. One of the new pull requests that came in. Looks like this one didn't work. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea. So AWS, uh, we're all friends here. We, so Jenkins, uh, we all share responsibilities, and Jenkins still tests a lot of things on Azure. So that's one good example. Um, but if you look at Jenkins plugins, we literally have dozens of plugins that came out of the Jenkins partnership for working with Jenkins as well. So you can integrate directly or you can integrate direct uh, through those DevOps things too. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you today. And uh, where's my slides? I didn't kill the slides, did I? Uh, looks like I did, okay. Never mind. I want to uh, show you the last slide, which is this one. <laughs> Let me fire that up. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. So we talked about what does DevOps get over? Uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, if you uh, have, need any more information, well, we can ask some questions right now. I'll be around for a while. Uh, we got about six minutes left. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I have uh, full code and steps by steps for this at DevOps for Java Shops. And I'm looking for folks to translate this and deliver it inside of their own organizations or I can help deliver it as well. But uh, let me know, keep in touch. Uh, Bbenz is my Twitter and uh, thanks, thank you. Uh, yeah, questions, yeah. For A? Um, for A-B testing, the way I showed you, uh, so the question is, do you have to have GitHub for A-B testing? In general, no, actually, um, but for, this, for the features I showed you, yes. So for Azure App Service, you'll have to have uh, the, the feature flags, and, for, and feature flags only work with .NET and Java, by the way, uh, on Azure. But there are other tools that work with other third-party tools to do A-B testing as well. But GitHub Actions is... What's that? Oh, App Service itself, yes. Um, so yeah, GitHub, 
it works as well with, um, it's built in with, with GitHub. It builds its own GitHub Actions if you work with Azure App Service and GitHub, but you can create one for Bitbucket or anything like that. If you search in the Azure Marketplace, you'll find some CI CD for, for most other platforms as well. And for deployment slots, you can also employ by the region of the IP address that you can uh, so the question was, yeah, for deployment slots, can you control by the region um, or the A-B test in general? Um, no, the feature flags you can control by region, so that's one way to do that, uh, but not inside the app service itself. Yeah. If you want to do that, you can use something like, um, there is an Azure, I want to say traffic manager, but I might be mixing it up with load balancer. I think it is traffic manager. If you go to Azure traffic manager, you can set up a reverse proxy and... You can do it that way, and it does allow you to do uh, uh, siphoning by region. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. So once my feature is finalized, yeah. right, so I think 100% of your application is now feature enabled. Yeah. Can we get rid of that feature? Feature flag? Or the variable needs to be there? Um, so the question was, can you get rid of the feature flag? Yes. Uh, so the feature flag is just like a wrapper around the application. Uh, around the code segment. Yes, so you just wrap a piece of, it's, it's not an if statement, but it's just a, uh, uh, it's an actual attribute in the case of Spring Boot. You wrap around the code, uh, so you can just remove that attribute and it'll be there all the time. But if you keep that attribute, then it's turned on and off by the feature flag. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, uh, so you can do, uh, for blue-green deployment, there's two places you can do that. Uh, let me show you, let me show you. So in the app service itself, you can adjust those percentages that I showed of the, um, of the app service. And then uh, in the feature flag, sorry, I'm trying to find it, but I'm not finding it right now. Uh, but in the feature flag, you can adjust the percentage as well. So you just literally change the percentage as you need it. You have to do that manually. You know, so, so one day you can say 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 for both features until it's 100%. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah, let me show you. I'll show you here and then that's probably... Um, you can come up after if you want. I can show you. In the, does anyone else have questions? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So the GitHub actions themselves are not um, all verified in the GitHub marketplace. So if I go down here to the uh, GitHub hosted runners, GitHub actions marketplace, there it is. Um, so there's all kinds of, you know, set up go environment. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of actions here. Um, they, there's, there's security built into the hosted runners, but still it's not foolproof security. It's really, um, you have to make sure when you're writing an action that, that you're not creating a vulnerability for yourself. It's only going to affect whatever you're deploying to in the case of CI, CD. Uh, but yeah, security is a concern. Um, just like any scripting environment, just like Java. I mean, you write Java, you can get in a lot of trouble. Um, and, and if you're using some vulnerable, you know, log, log for J, <laughs> for example, is a good example. Um, you know, there's always things out there that could be vulnerable, but, um, in the most part, the hosted runners themselves are pretty secure and they won't allow you to run some older versions of vulnerable uh, node and things like that. I've run into that myself where I had a GitHub action that was working for a while and I didn't bother to update the node version and then I went to do a demo and one day it just won't run because the, the hosted runner refuses to run that version anymore. Uh, because of security. So that's, you know, there is some, some checks and balances and security there, but 
Um, yeah, you still have to watch what you're doing with the scripts when you're working with, uh, with your YAML, just like anything else. <laughs> yeah, there's no, like, there's no team out there running through every, as far as I know, maybe there is, running through every permutation of every script you could possibly have to see if there's any trouble you can get into. But we do, we do secure and control the hosted runners at least. Yeah, so, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so GitHub Actions, good question. GitHub Actions does run on on-prem. For example, if you wanna run ARM processors, uh, you can run that on-prem. There's an option for running your own hosted runners. So you can create that and run them yourself. Uh, if you just search on uh, host, on-prem hosted runners, you'll find information on that. That's a whole different session. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, because the feature flags will still work regardless of where they are. They still, you have to use the, so the question was, will A-B testing the way I showed you still work? Uh, it still has, for example, for the feature flags, you have to put in that connection string to the feature flag manager, and it will work from anywhere that, that is web accessible. You know, you turn on that feature flag. So you could have 20, 30 different applications, some of them on the web, some on prem, and you click that button, and it's going to change the feature flag for all of them. Yeah. Anything else? Well, I think I'll have to wrap it up there. Um, thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, check out uh, uh, DevOps for Java Shops for more information and follow me on Twitter and I'll be around for questions if you need. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>